Hey guys and welcome back to another Animal Artists Collective video. If you're new here or you've never seen an Animal Artists Collective video, let me give you a little bit of background. The AAC is a group of artists on YouTube creating art to help raise awareness for animal conservation and to bring light to emerging artists. Every other month we release videos based around a particular theme and this round's theme was urban wildlife. Each round our theme is chosen by you guys so if you want to join in and choose next round's theme you can vote over on our Facebook page with the link in the description below. If you want to have a go at this round make sure you tag us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of those social media platforms with the hashtag Animal Artists Collective. The links for all social media and everything are listed in the description below for you guys. So this theme had me pondering for a while as I didn't want to go with an absolute obvious choice and to be honest I had a really hard time coming up with any kind of urban wildlife other than a fox. So I did a little bit of thinking and I remember watching a TV series about urban badgers in Brighton and it made me think just how many badgers I actually see in my area and I am constantly seeing them despite them being really elusive creatures. So I did a little bit of research to make sure that urban badgers were actually a thing and it turns out that they absolutely are. They're just not as prevalent as a lot of other urban wildlife. And this actually turned out really perfect because I really like to focus on local wildlife either in my area or UK based and the badger being one of the most iconic British animals fits absolutely perfectly. So with urban badgers being a thing, I did a little research into the differences between those and the country dwelling badgers and it turns out that research and studies are extremely few but I did find some interesting facts to talk to you guys about. So badgers are very adaptable creatures and it's no surprise that they have actually ventured into our cities and towns. An urban badger's set is a lot smaller than that of their rural counterpart and they have fewer holes to which they can access this set. And urban badgers tend to stick to tiny areas with territories around five hectares, whereas rural badgers often have ranges on average of 50 hectares. So that's a pretty significant difference for our urban badgers. The family size for urban badgers is also a lot smaller than those country dwellers with an average of 5 or 6 and the country badgers can have up to 30 living in one set. Can you imagine having 30 people in your house? That would be absolutely manic. I don't know how badgers do it. City badgers are also a lot larger than their counterparts which is probably down to the amount and the quality of food that they can find in the city. So a badger's diet mainly consists of earthworms, berries, fruits, other small mammals but obviously in a city they have a lot more opportunity to fish out a leftover hamburger or chow down on something tasty that someone's left out for them. So they tend to be a lot larger in size. As well as in my local area, badgers have also been spotted at Kew Gardens in London, in Manchester and a whole load of other major cities around the UK, so they are becoming a lot more prevalent than we may think. Badger sets in major locations such as Kew Gardens are kept under wraps because as public we just want to see everything in its natural habitat but they're kept really quiet and secret to prevent public from disturbing or destroying them. Badgers and their sets are actually protected by law in the UK to prevent people from harming them and it's actually an offence to attempt to or injure a badger, dig for badgers. This one really made me chuckle. Can you imagine going out with a shovel and digging up badgers? Crazy. Anyway, intentionally damage, destroy or obstruct a set, use a dog to enter a set or disturb a badger when it's occupying the set. So there's a load of different ways in which they are actually protected. And they are protected under the Protection of Badgers Act 1992 and if you would like more information on their protection status and that whole act kind of thing, I'll leave a helpful link in the description below for you if you want to do some further reading. So with a few facts under our belt, let me talk to you about the piece I created for this round. So I did a little bit of digging around and I tried to find a decent reference to work from which I could use for a tutorial and I found this one amongst very few on Pixabay. Let me tell you, trying to find a picture of a badger that is acceptable to use as reference 
that is tiresome. It really did take me a long time. So when I found this reference looking at it, I immediately knew that I had to change a few things such as the eyes, the lighting, etc. to make this a successful piece because the reference, although it being the best of a bad bunch, it still wasn't great. There were bits of straw, all kinds of stuff littered uh, along its coat and I just knew that I had to just take those out. Its eyes were half closed and I really wanted like wide open eyes like I've drawn here. So I just had to change a few things for the reference. For this piece I used all polychromous colours apart from my favourite Caran d'Ache Luminance white pencil because you just cannot go anywhere without that trusty fella. And I started with the eyes as I usually do and then worked out to the fur. And I used light layers of warm grey one and cold grey one, building them together and then going over with my dark sepia pencil and adding in a few highlights with Delft Blue, Caput Mortem and Burnt Sienna. So I just glazed a few of those additional colours over the top to really bring that fur to life. The white fur of this badger was my absolute favourite to create as I got to use some browns, some greens, some greys to really bring it to life and I think white fur might actually be my favourite to create. So to create the white fur I just did exactly the same thing as I did for the black fur. I just layered down a couple layers of grey, mainly the warm grey one and then I went over with some warm grey three, some burnt sienna, some caput mortem, some nougat, all of those lovely colours and also a green tone as well just to really add some depth and everything to that white fur. So when building the fur I made sure that I worked in the direction that the fur was going according to that reference photo and I made sure that I kept my pencil strokes really short to convey that short texture on the front of the face. And when I was adding in those browns and greens and all of those lovely colours I used an incredibly light hand barely touching the paper to just give the slightest hint of colour. For the whiskers and a few fine lines throughout this piece I actually went through and used an embossing tool to indent the paper and that produces really effective bold lines. You can use an embossing tool of various sizes to get different widths and sizes of fine lines. So I just went through with an embossing tool, added the whiskers, fine lines around the ears, around the neck and all that, that kind of thing. I had a little bit of struggle with this piece in the dark areas and I don't know if it was just my previous layers of pencil or my paper but I just couldn't get rid of the grainy look and it was really starting to bother me to the point that I was actually ready to scrap this piece and start again. Originally I decided against using a solvent as it's not a tool that I often use but I decided to give it a go and lo and behold it fixed my problem and got rid of that grain. I literally could have kissed the bottle but I didn't because hello that's solvent that would be a really bad idea plus the smell is just yuck. But one tip I have for you guys when you're using solvent is that it's really important to let your solvent dry before going over and adding more pencil. Otherwise you'll end up with smudges and it will look completely nasty. So I would recommend about 30 minutes, that should do the trick. So with my solvent in place and really nicely blended, got rid of all of that grain, I could then go through and layer up my pencils to a really nice rich dark colour and then again I went over and overlaid some blues, some greens, some browns to produce a really beautiful coat for the badger. I then worked my way along the back and continued all of that lovely white fur that I absolutely love, adding in hints of mauve, blue, green, I really am in my element when it comes to white fur. For some of the final details I went in with that luminance white pencil and I added really tiny little fur strokes to add some texture. So to add those I just made sure that the pencil was really really sharp, I used a really light hand and just really gently stroked the paper with the point of the pencil. I really looked at the reference picture as well to see where the light played and then I mimicked that with my piece. So that pretty much brings us to the end of this piece. If you are interested in purchasing the original, you can find it listed on my website. The link is in the description below for you guys. And 50% of the proceeds for this piece will be going to the Wildlife Conservation Society. I've also left a link in the description for you to find out more about that charity as well. Also, make sure that you check out all of the other amazing animal artist collective pieces there are some crackers this time round, so make sure you check them out here on youtube their links are all listed in the description below for you as well 
You can also find the full five hour real time tutorial for this beautiful guy over on my Patreon page. So if you fancy having a go at this piece, pop along over there. You'll also find a whole host of other tutorials and resources to help you with your coloured pencil journey. If you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new around here, why not hit that subscribe button? I post new videos every single Friday to help you learn more about coloured pencils and I also live stream on Sundays too. So thanks for watching this video guys, I really do hope that you enjoyed the few facts I told you about badges and the way in which I created this piece and I will see you next week. Bye!